Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, today's date is December 16th. We're here in the Midwest of the United States of America. Com- coming up on Christmas time. That we are. The, the, the time of year where gifts are going and gifts are giving. Yes, where, where we are thankful for family and exchanging of uh, monetary valued gifts. Which yeah. is fun. Like my wife is like, "Don't do that. Don't give me this. Don't give people anything." I'm just like, "I can't do that because people are going to give us stuff. They're going to give, you know, other family members of mine stuff." So, I like mm. to to give back. You know, if if you if you can, then then you know, then you should. You obviously shouldn't be going into debt. I think that's that's always been kind of ridiculous in my mind for people who like max out their credit cards and stuff like that. You shouldn't, you know, ruin like long term financial well being. Over Christmas too, well, and then, in order you know, to, in order to because that's that, not what it's about. I, you, you would have to spend large amounts of money yeah. to set you back real there's, far. There's a lot of people that do though that max out credit cards and stuff like that that you know go into go into debt for Christmas, which I don't I don't think they should do. I think it, you know, people should understand this isn't it's not about what you can receive. If you're able to give, then you should give. But I you know I don't think you know you shouldn't get too crazy with it. You know, no, I mean I think max for me is like fifty bucks per person for gift. And I think I can get a lot of that done. I mean, because there's just at least eight or nine people I have to buy for, so. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah, that number's right about the same for me. My nieces and nephews are really easy this year, and they just want fucking cash, which I'm perfectly fine with. Yeah, yeah. I and then it's cool, you're that cool uncle, you know, like, hey, dude, Jesse gives me so fucking money, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, tie it, man. Yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, dude, Christmas is cool. I mean, I, I, I do. I love Christmas. The origins of Christmas, I don't think that's really something we should get into, because who truly knows when Jesus Christ was, was it when he was born, right? Yeah, that, man, it's a, I think it's a, there's pagan, it, it's, it's a mixture of pagan and um, Christian religion th- this time of year, you know, like, like, a, honestly, a bunch of pretty much every other holiday that has to do with the Christian religion too. But, but yeah, you don't have well, to I get was, into yeah. details about that. And I was thinking about this and I'm, and I'm not trying to say this in a bad way, but I get three days off next week. You know, it fa- Christmas falls on Christmas Eve's on a Monday, Christmas days on a Tuesday. We're closed Tuesday. I get three days off, man. You know how nice that is? Yeah, I get it every week. <laughs> yeah, you do. But guess, I love it. Guess what? Christmas Eve, boom, we got to go somewhere and do something with family next day we got to go see another family and then go see my side of the family so it's like fuck man i don't get to enjoy these three days off yeah (laughs) yeah now i feel you i can only handle my my uh immediate family for for so long i love them to death but yeah i mean maybe if i just pooped each time i was at the family member's house then it would make it worth it yeah that because that totally makes sense (laughs) i mean i've never done that so why not try it out and just see if maybe i feel better about it yeah yeah, you probably feel more comfortable around everybody, you know, be lighter, lighter on your feet. Dude, there are times, especially this week at work, where, I mean, it, I was feeling it, and it was like some hardcore diarrhea, and I know no, none of our listeners want to hear that, but it, it couldn't wait. There was no waiting about it, and I was just like, you know what? In my head, I was like, why am I waiting? I just need to go to the bathroom here at work and just let it out. Yeah, do it. I hate doing it, too. Everybody likes their own fucking toilet, man. No, no, no. No, I'm done with that. I'm completely done with that. I'm I'm over it. <laughs> Wherever there's a toilet and I can use the restroom and I have to go, I'm not waiting any longer. It's just going to happen. It's healthy, too. Yeah. It is. Listen to your body, man. Yeah. And who cares? Like, that's the thing. Like, why don't I just go in the bathroom and shit? Like, if someone walks in, I just get all, like, quiet and I don't let it out. Like, next time. I do like, the same thing. Yeah. I just. <laughs> and I then you end up getting angry at that person. Like, why the fuck are you in here? Yes. Taking fucking three minutes to fucking piss. I'm yeah. like, Jesus, get out of here. I'm trying to unload my bells. Well, and the thing is, like, for any man, and I know that. If they say that they don't do this, they're lying. Whenever you walk in and you see, like, the dude's pants drawers hanging down low underneath the stall, like, you look through that small crack and you see him. Yeah. Everyone does it, man. Everyone fucking oh, does no, it. Oh, no, no. I, yes. I try to leave that guy alone. No, I know, but it, it just it subconsciously happens. Like, because you're walking in and you, you look over there because you see someone's feet, and then you turn around and go to the urinal, but you do look through that crack. Yeah. Everyone looks well, through the e- crack. Well, it's even worse at our place because that wall that's right there, if that's, like, super clean, you can see reflection <laughs> from that whole wall, which is even worse than the crack. Man, public... Uh, Public uh, restrooms don't do not care about. They're sketch, yeah, <laughs> and especially Chief Stadiums, man. You have like a row of like fifty fucking urinals, and all the dudes are pissing at the same time. Before they renovated the bathrooms, and I don't think you ever went to Arrowhead when they did this. It was one long urinal. Oh yeah, that's they just they yeah. weren't separate. It was just one long one. Yeah, you just pull it out and you just whiz, man. Yeah, there's there's a lot of no. You you end up 
especially being a guy, girls girls don't will never understand this. But you end up accidentally seeing a whole lot of dick throughout your life in in restrooms like that. Yes, just unintentionally. Like, yeah. Obviously, that's that's why you have that that head forward, up a little bit. Like you glance down to make sure you're not about to piss on yourself, and then once you know you got a clear stream, you know no uh, you know no objectives in the way. You fucking yeah, you just look up, you know. So there was, I think it was like two weeks ago. Uh, I was peeing at work, and there was a kid next to me or whatever, and he was in the smaller the smaller stall, and I was at the bigger stall. I was like, whatever, you know, I hate going to the bigger one because I'm not that tall. Anyways, I do it because mm-hmm. I'm just trying to do it, and. Like, I'm doing it, and then I get done, and I turn around, and the kid's standing right behind me. He was just standing right behind me. I'm like, dude, like, it just happened so fast. Like, I turn around, and he's just like, uh, and, and then, like, he's just right behind Wait, me. you were taking a shit? No, I was peeing in okay. the stall, or yeah. in the urinal, sorry. And I turn around, and the kid's just right behind me looking at me. Yeah. Like, he wasn't washing his hands. He was standing right behind me. Yeah, little little kids, yeah, they don't, they don't know. He, he was maybe, like, 12 or 13. Okay, that's it, e- yeah. Either way, sure like I, I personal just, space. Yeah, I turned around, washed my hands, and I walked out. Yeah, I was like, bro, that was like the weirdest thing ever. Like, no, no, thank you. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's my weird story. Yeah. Man. <laughs> little little kids don't know that they're being creepy. They they say they say things too that are you know inappropriate, but it's fine. They're little kids. Yeah, yeah. They'll be the first person to point out an ugly person in the room or like an overweight person. They don't they don't care. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but he he needs to just. Stick to himself, you know. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Totally. Anyways, man. Um, so well, I want to get into night. So I think it was right around twelve thousand eight hundred years ago. Scientists have just discovered that a okay, it was a uh, impact underneath glaciers in Greenland. Okay. Okay. So this either was an asteroid or it was a comet. All right, and it was massive, real big, like real, real big, mm-hmm. and. It struck Greenland, dude. It struck it 12,800 years ago. Cool. You know the significance of that? No. No? So think about this. When did, uh, allegedly, when did civilization start? Oh, I would just, off the top of my head, probably like 4,000 years ago? No, it's like, it's like 5,000 years ten, ago? 10 to 12,000 years ten? ago. Okay. Oh, okay. You see where I'm going with this? Okay. So... No, no, I don't see where you're going so, with this. But. So they're all these are all timelines, okay? Okay. And they can carbon date things, and you know there are records and accounts of the very first beginning times of of ancient civilization, but but the but the importance of them finding this impact crater is the fact that if this were to happen twelve to twelve thousand to twelve thousand eight hundred years ago, you had Egypt, right? You had Mesopotamia. Okay. So. A lot of a lot of scientists or mainstream scientists or scholars or whatever, when it comes to ancient civilization, they'll say that Egypt's like ten thousand years old. But everyone has their own opinions. You have a lot of other people coming out now saying, "Yeah, you're right." I feel like a dumbass for saying five thousand years ago now. Yeah, yeah. But um, so basically, there's a theory right now that I've that I've come across is that, ain't or Egypt at the time, let's say before this uh, impact hit Greenland, um, like I said, I, I I need to read this, but it was massive. It was going like four thousand miles per hour when it entered entered the uh, the atmosphere, mm-hmm. and I think it was like four miles long. Was how big this fucking it's crater aggressive. was. Yeah, it was huge. And if it were to impact, it was gonna it was the the amount of megatons like compared to Hiroshima, with the bombs dropped in Hiroshima was like a million times more uh, powerful than that. Yeah. So, um, what what the consensus is is that. Uh, in Egypt at the time, and this is nowhere near Egypt, right? But it wiped out the civilization of Egypt. It wiped out the Mayans. It wiped out civilization at that time as we know it. Okay. So that's the explanation. That's the cause of the flood. Because anywhere you go, if you were to be in America or if you were to be, go to China, if you were to go, they tell tales of a great flood. Yeah. So this could be the cause of the great flood, and this could be the cause of the diminish of the ancient civilizations. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And I guess all these civilizations. So what what culture survived, though, that... I don't know if there's any way to tell, but I would assume Greenland's more northern. So you would have to assume... So if that's the case, and you could date it back, so if you put a pen 
on the on the planet Earth where the meteor impacted, and then you went immediately on the other side of the Earth and then put a pin. Uh, opposite of that, that's probably the most likely area to survive it. Right. Right. Yeah. And and be least affected. I would assume so. I mean, the magnitude. I mean, it, you have to think it instantly evaporated, um, just com- massive amounts of ice sheets. And at this point in time, America could have been covered. The part of Northern America could have been in, in a some sort of an ice age. Yeah. You know, is what they think. And it completely melted all those glaciers, and that's what caused the flood. But yeah, you're right. I think that makes sense. I can get on board with that. But just like logically, to kind of prove that point, if if you could go to the other side of the Earth and be like, okay, now this is where modern or civilization, after all those civilizations, like if they were all gone around the same time. And then the civilizations that still survived, it should be the exact opposite of where the meteorite hit, right? Because that would have been the safest point on Earth. For sure, yeah. I just don't know if that has any... That would make sense unless the complete opposite side of the Earth of where Greenland is is all ocean, right? So it's just a matter of where landmass is. But there's... Obviously, humans still survived it, and we're still here today. So somewhere along the lines, I'm not entirely sure where those people survived. Uh And who knows 12,800 years ago if Antarctica wasn't covered in ice and Northern America was covered in ice in some sort of ice age, and people lived on Antarctica. No one really knows that. You yeah. Know? So you, you have that as well. Um, so I think the, the craziest thing for me that just that trips me out the most is that maybe before that asteroid hit, like there was like an advanced civilization that built the pyramids, that built the Sphinx, that built pyramids in China, that built... Uh, all the the South America pyramids, all that stuff, you know, that we see and we think about and we have no answers to, I think that's what happened. It wiped them out, man. No, it's... Yeah. And I think that they were way more advanced than we were, but in a different way. Not when it comes to technology and computers. They just had a different way of their own advancement of technology. That makes sense. I, I, I like that theory. I can get on board with that. Same. Um, I'm just trying to think. In argument against it. Well, I mean, there's really not much. To, it happened. Oh, sorry, it was a mile wide iron asteroid hit. No. Yeah, so it was a mile. Sorry, it wasn't four miles wide. It was a mile wide, but still, a mile wide is pretty big. The crater is 19.3 miles wide and has remained hidden under a half mile thick ice sheet until now. It's just crazy. And I know there's not really much to go into it. But I think like where I'm coming from is there's a guy named it's Bright In- Bright Insight. It's a YouTube channel that I was listening to, and he you know he's really big on ancient stuff, and he was just saying, and he made a very interesting point that if you go back to um, e- Egyptian times and you look at Egyptian hieroglyphics, there's not one hieroglyph of any pyramids. So what he's saying is that the Egyptians basically either inherited the pyramids or they took over the pyramids or they just found the pyramids and that's where they started their civilization that the egyptians didn't even build the pyramids that's fucking crazy as fuck that's crazy as fuck there's not a single hieroglyph at all of of any pyramids right and there's not even any hieroglyphics I i would have to listen to the video again sorry in any of the pyramids no, I, I know that, which yeah. has always been weird. Yeah. Because that was the big argument, because they used to call them burial chamber, uh, barrier chambers. Right. You know, which they're not. For their, yeah, because they, in burial chambers, they have, you know, massive amounts of hieroglyphics and, and paint and artwork, and they get, you know, due to their religion, you know, they believe that they were taking everything that was in the burial chamber with them to the afterlife, so they just pack it full of fucking golden shit. There's none of that in any of the pyramids. So they, yeah. they inherited the pyramids, or they just found them, and that's where they started their civilization. You still have to wonder, what is the fucking, what's the use of it, you know? Well, you wonder that, and then you have to even wonder who had it before them. Yeah, and Man, how I long ago. some fucking pot before we started this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that would have been good. No, that's, um, no, that's insane. I mean, but the, Ip- the Egyptians still did crazy stuff with their artwork and being very precise like even their artwork is um they don't they never drew it the hieroglyphics into stuff they would make it to where it was like 3D like coming out which is always like super in, like that's so difficult to do and so precise cuz obviously if you fuck that up then you know it, you have obvious like errors everywhere but they were super precise with their hieroglyphs man that's yeah well, I don't think we'll ever know man some, some of the writings that are in 
because there are writings in the pyramids. I guess it's not hieroglyphics necessarily, necessarily, but there are writings that they that you can find. Because I'm pretty sure that the one that that like really is like description descriptive is the one of it. It looks like a light bulb. You know. Really? Yeah. That it was inside of a pyramid hieroglyphs. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just the one that is kind of weird to me. Well, yeah, this is all. That's not what I was looking for. Maybe they weren't in the pyramids. What's what's that one where it's like fucking floating up in the fucking air? Which one? Scroll down real quick. Oh, that's just some bullshit, man. Okay, I was like, man, they're... So do you think the Sphinx was inherited too? Well, okay, so let, let's just say this. Let's say you're an ancient wandering people with minimal technology, right? And then you're, like, just walking through the fucking desert. You're trying to establish establish yourself someplace. And then you come across massive pyramids that are clearly not of just the natural way of the planet. Would you not all of a sudden be like, okay, we need to, you know, we need to be here. This place is important kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I mean... And whether if you're traveling in your, I mean, in, the, in that time they actually, they actually think that it wasn't even a desert, anyways. They think it was a very tropical place, a lot of greenery yeah. and stuff like that. Yep. And if you're just like traveling and doing your thing, and next thing you know, you look and you see these tall, massive, you know, stat or pyramids, like yeah, you're gonna hit it up. Yeah, you're gonna check that shit out for sure. And then no, nobody's there. You're gonna be like, okay, I need to be here. Tell me that's not a light bulb. That big thing that he's fucking holding. Yeah. It looks like he's holding a piece of technology that's shining light. Yeah. Or like some kind of ray. Yeah, but you see like the little wire. It just looks like a light bulb, man. I do. I, 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 yeah, I get that. Does anyone look up? Uh, that's definitely ancient, a piece of technology. Ancient Egyptian light bulb. Just look that up and just look up the images. It looks, it looks like a light bulb. And they, I guess they found that in the, some temple um, of Hebralth or something like that. Yeah, man, that shit's crazy. I would love to know. Actually, I don't even know if I want to know. I think we were talking about that um, the other, like the other day. You were talking about. Uh, I don't know if you you're ready to segue into this or not. Oh, but, always. Uh, that uh, the computer. What's it called again? The D wave. The D wave. Yeah. And you were first of all break break that down for everybody. So the D wave is a con- a quantum computer, and it is it, it's sorry it runs on it has to run and operate in temperatures of negative four hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Fucking that shit's so crazy. Yeah. Just because it's computing so much information so fast. Yeah. And now is it so this is AI then, right? Uh, I think it's a more advanced version of AI. I mean, it. W- yeah, you're right. When it boils down to it, it's AI. There's a do du- a, a guy that works for the people who developed the D Wave, and he was talking to a whole bunch of people in some sort of conference, or just people who are curious, probably people with money or whatever. What, what may you have? But he legitimately said, like everyone in this room how no matter how smart you think you are this computer is smarter than all of us combined that's insane you ask it a question you type it in it'll go into the computer and it 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 just it'll answer the question for you immediately now man my i'm just so beneath anything that is this technologically advanced like is it hooked up to the internet to where it has this constant feed like of of information like is it learning about society like constantly like, does it watch, you know, does it watch our podcast? Does the D-Wave, have, like, listen, if it has that kind of computing power, has it listened to our podcast before? <laughs> does it know us by name? Like, <laughs> I'm sure it could. Dude, what if it, what if that's the case? What if, and to be honest with you, if we're able to read about it, there's something more advanced than this, by the way. There's something underground and more advanced about this, oh, in, in my opinion. Very true. They've already, there, well, there's some shit that isn't even being talked about well, it's and their, is so far under wraps. It's their that's fourth. probably... It's their fourth generation quantum computer, so they're probably already at like the tenth generation. Yeah, that we don't know about right. because this is just the way of the world. This just how it works. Very true. And they say it's alien in, in in retrospect. They don't say it's anything human-like. They, I mean, obviously it's not, but they say it's more alien-like. I want to know because this is extremely frightening to me. <laughs> so it was founded in 1999. It's the world's first quantum computing company and the leader in development and delivery of quantum computi- computing systems and software. And the death of the sentient beings. Yeah, pretty much. 
Just don't give it the launch codes. Right. <laughs> I'm sure it could happen if they wanted to. They but. probably already figured it out. I mean, what what information are they really going to give us on their website of what it's able to do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I guarantee you this is all bullshit. I mean, literally. I'm not saying that it's bullshit. I'm saying anything that they're telling you, they've already surpassed. And Well, if it has to run in sub-zero temperatures at negative 400 degrees, I mean, that's just how powerful it is. Yeah. Could you imagine? I mean, like, you walk in, you're instantly frozen. Yeah. Well, that's probably just where th- where its core is at, where its main computing right. like takes place. Yeah, that's also a good safety mechanism, by the way, in case it starts fucking, in case it does get the launch codes. You just go on ahead and have a manual. Okay, we're gonna turn off your cooling system, and next thought you try to think of, it just burns out, and you're done. But uh, unless it figures out a way around that, <laughs> unless it simplifies everything, then all of a sudden it can run off of zero energy. I don't fucking know. Well, I mean, if it, but, was, if it was able to be smart enough, I'm sh- which it is, obviously, I'm sure it could. But I want to know in what way is it smart, though? Like, like you were telling me that, okay, and this is where I was trying to segue it from with that other thing. Like, there's just some things I don't want to know. Like, you were saying you could ask it questions. Like, I, there are just some things in life that I just don't want to know. Like, I don't want to ask this super highly intelligent, now what you're saying is alien intelligence. Like... Yeah, I mean, I I haven't heard it answer any questions. I've just seen specific videos on how it works and and not a video of it in work, right? Yeah. So um, that's the thing. They just need to... I'm, I'm willing to start a GoFundMe to uh, to have a Andy Reid and Bob Sutton get flown out to wherever this thing is at and they get to sit down with it and ask him how to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> I'll start the fucking GoFundMe. I would do that. <laughs> you can fucking ask the D-Wave how to do it. Do you think that technology like that's necessary? Oh, uh, no. No. That I is mean, that is not necessary. So quantum computing, and I'm trying to understand what's the point in that. Um, if we're trying to do space travel and stuff like that, maybe that's a good use for it. But other than that, and or maybe to solve cancer, or what's the, the cure for cancer, or the cure for economic depression... See, but okay, so that's what I'm saying. Like, in what way is it smart? Because I don't, you're not able to, unless you do experimentation with stuff, right? You can't solve those kind of problems when it comes to like bacteria and what like cancer, like cancer cells and stuff like that. Like, you actually need to make attempts at it to know whether or not it was right or wrong. If it's just a computer that's a bunch of ones and zeros, that's not like physically tangibly being able to fuck with shit in a lab then how 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 could it ever fucking figure that shit out like like what is it able to fucking figure out just with computing alone that without that that hands-on you know actual scientific experimentation like if it's transcended the um what is it the the scientific method you know where you um you come up with a hypothesis and then you have the then you have the control and then you have the experiment and then you document it and then you you know you record the changes and compare it to the hypothesis and okay this is what actually happened and then you go through this fucking process that that's a very hands on you know experience like how is that computer getting any any hands on anything when it comes to like a, like a scientific method of learning is what i'm saying so how can it solve cancer without going and like messing with cancer cells or you know true, you know true. what i'm saying no, that makes like it would sense. have to be exposed to cancer cells right right but like you and said if it had access to absolutely everything that the internet's ever done or any type of research i mean it literally could soak in all that information and at then, any given time and then it has and i guess that would be something to build off of right but i don't i don't think it'd be able to give you an answer right away it would need to be able to physically tangibly be able to start fucking with that shit right like they would have to take a vial of whatever the disease was put plug it, it in, in exactly the d wave and then all of a sudden yeah that and there's nothing to say that they haven't done that you know shit <laughs> i mean if, if this is the fourth generation imagine everything that they put into that computer for what it's for what it's able to do yeah because you know they have banks you know or or uh, underground facilities where they hold all diseases and they hold all artifacts and stuff like that in case something were to ever happen. So if they have access to something like that, they'd be able to easily give this computer any knowledge that it ever needed. Okay, so I'm going to go on ahead and just argue my own statement that I just said, that it needed hands-on experience. We Can can you agree that everything can be broken down to some kind of math, right? Sure. Everything yeah. can be broken down to some kind of like math. Simple like simple math like or something? anything. Well, just not simple math, but just math. Like everything can be a number. Like you can translate something to a number. So what if they figured out a way to fucking code it to where true. Very true. this is now 
and that would be super complex this is immediately like super complex but all of a sudden now everything is is mathematical and then it reads things in a mathematical sense so that's what i'm saying and then you just try to you want this outcome like you want x and then you're like okay these are all the variables that we've broken down mathematically that can right. be re- read on like ones and zeros now how do you get to x so imagine, and then it's fucking boom cure I'm, for cancer right imagine any facility that does any that type crazy. Uh, that does any type of like cancer research or any type of disease research and they have the vials and then they put the vials into some sort of computer system and they, i guarantee you that that's what they do and that's how they look it up on the computer and they look at all the information of what it what it the ones and zeros sorry i burped a little bit so that's what I'm saying, that that information has probably already been siphoned. Maybe that computer has developed that system within itself. Maybe, think about this. If it's that intensive computing, what if it Just explains to the human beings... Like, hey, make me? No, they're, they're like, this is what I need you to do in order for me to read this. And then develops the fucking, oh, this is where you have to plug it in at. What if it's already designed? What if they asked it, hey, you know, what do we need to do to cure cancer? And then it's like, okay... I need you to give me this information on this, but in this fucking format, and then I'm going to figure it out from there. And all I need is all I need is this amount of information, and it knows what it's going to have to do to be able to find the fucking cure. So I'm and then just, all you do is plug it in, and then it fucking figures it out. What I'm confused about is how does how does technology or AI become smarter than man if we create it? Because if because we're the ones creating the programs, how does it develop and blossom into its own self of thought well because of how limited we are because we like the way that our brain works is just these electrical nerve like synapses firing in our brain that are actually like still in in our comparison we're the we're the leading edge of any of any biological life right right but still very limited to what could actually be which is shit like this like you would have said some shit like this like back you know 100 years ago they would have been like this is impossible of course. This is very much real now. To where all you're doing is you're taking what the human brain is, these electrical impulses, and but now you're changing it and you're you're refining it and you're making it better. And now it's now it's fucking this shit to where it's like But like you've opened up a computer and you've looked on the inside of what it looks like, right? Yeah. It's just insane. Like it just it, it baffles me to think that they could create something that could think for itself and be smarter than a human being. I think that's very no. It's very reasonable. That doesn't blow my mind at all. That that's very reasonable. But when, whenever you, when you break it down and try and truly think about oh, it like being, figure it out. Oh, dude, yeah. that's fucking crazy as fuck, man. Yeah. That, that that's taken but even generations if, of the absolute best and the like people on the forefront of of their field that have you know slowly put in like little puzzle pieces to you know to get it to where it's at now. Right, and I understand that. M- you know, when we, when it first started, it was, hey, like, we're going to make a computer, and it's going to say 1 plus 1 equals 2. Or they, it's, I mean, we weren't born in the 60s or 70s when the computers were first coming out and how big they were and the the small amount of work it was able to do, right? Because yeah. I, that's what you're saying, the forefront. That was the very beginning of yeah. the computer. And to, to how it's developed now and how intense it is, you're saying it's the strongest-minded people in the world that have been working on it for 30 to 40-plus years. So it's this collective of, of almost 100 years now. Well, the first computer was well, like, was it 30s, 30s, 40s, oh, probably 30s man, or 40s. I don't, probably 40s or 50s. Well, it, ha- it would have to have been like the 30s or 40s. Germans whenever maybe they were, probably whenever had they some were shit first going on with in the it. 30s, yeah. Cause t- they had and I guess TV. it all depends on what, because like you could say the first computer was um, the Morse code, like the, just the clicking That's throughout true. like long distances. Right. Because like how the fuck, I, don't, I still don't know how the fuck that works. Like, even Morse code, like, that's super basic. I don't know how the fuck that works. And how do you, yeah, I mean, obviously, people think, well, how can I communicate with someone faster, quicker? How can we do that? Yeah. But how do you even think, like, Morse code, how is that going to work? You just build some lines, and then, you know, the lines go across the United States. And United just States. reading blips, you yeah. know? And then now it's fucking, they're doing it's, God knows what with D Wave. It's just insane to me that man can create something that can be smarter than man. That's just, like, the craziest thing. And that I know should you, really make you question God at that point, really, right? Not necessarily, because it took us, what, 12... I mean, if what we talked about earlier, if this asteroid wiped out civilization, it took us 12,000 more years to figure it out, which... That that comes down to that, that big philosophical debate about God, that God can't exist because if there's one thing God couldn't do would be to destroy itself and would eventually attempt to do it because there would only be that, that left. And then... You know, and then either fail or it fucking happen, kind of thing. Like, how do you how do you constantly have this pinnacle? You know, like what's the best kind of kind of fucking thing? Like, where does God sit in all that? And that's true. 
God. I know that's real deep, but that's very deep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every time that that yeah that conversation is applied to my brain, it's just like. But whoa. this, but whenever you talk about uh, computers that are all of a sudden surpassing human human thought, you have to start thinking about, you know, that makes you think. Well, where the fuck is God at then in this line? Because now we just got bumped back, right? Like it just you know it's that much more distance, you know. I don't. All this. I don't think it has to be. I mean, eventually this was going to happen. I don't necessarily think that you have to put God in the, into the equation. Just because we're able to create something that's smarter than us, and we've been, like you said, the number one in the food chain for a very long period of time, and we're creating something that's going to overtake us in that food chain, which makes absolutely no sense. But, I mean, I, I don't think that that distances God from the equation. Do you think that they're running, like, simu- like is this something that they're going to run simulation theory on and then start another universe on something like the D-Wave? It's a possibility. I mean, I don't <laughs> see why not. I mean, if you can create a civilization within a computer, that would be nuts. That's yeah. exactly like this one. And then, yeah, I mean. And then everything's separately interacting and developing on its own and evolving on its own. Yeah. Could you imagine like if Dude, you could, it's, it's simulation. If theory. you could put like on some goggles, like some some 3D goggles or whatever it is, or, you know, like the VR shit. And like you're you work on this D wave shit and you can just watch a universe explode and you just watch like the beginning stages of like a, a civilization. Like I would sit there. I wouldn't even get up from my chair. Dude. This is what's insane is that is not improbable. It's you can't not. be like, oh, that's impossible to do. No, it is not. <laughs> if we're yeah, we're we'll get there whether or not we're there yet or if it's 100 years from now or 200 years from now. Technology just keeps advancing. Eventually. They're going to be able to simulate a fucking universe. And you're right. You're going to be able to put on fucking some VR fucking goggles and witness that shit in full color spectrum that your fucking brain is able to fucking perceive and fucking and see that shit and fucking like travel through it and not be interacting with fucking. But maybe you're just fucking get stoned one day and fucking be like, all right, I'm going to fuck with them real quick and knock some shit over. And they'd be like, oh, they're ghosts. Look at the ghosts, man. Like that shit trips me out, man. <laughs> That could explain ghosts. That could explain the fucking pyramids. Them just implementing. They could just be fucking around. Like this, this could be a simulation, and you could have some fucking people that are just controlling a super high-powered computer, and they just fuck with us every now and again. Fucking throw a meteor in the fucking Earth. Mandela effect. Yeah, the Mandela effect. Whatever. Yeah, that's that how explains, they explain it. Yeah. Dude, it explains a lot of shit, man. The simulation theory. It, it really, really does. does. Scary as fuck. Well, and what's more scary is, uh, and I don't know how much... I don't know who's simulating these fucking NFL referees. (laughs) (laughs) God, we need to stay off the sports. I'm sorry, guys. I got football on the mind. Um, I don't know if you're going to agree with this, but here's another theory or hypothesis or conspiracy um, for the reason of these D-waves and how it... Tech, like like you said, if this is the fourth generation and you haven't really done a lot of research on it, but just picture this. Like you said, maybe they have technology that's even better than this D-wave or maybe a better generation. So, you know, climate change has really been a big push the past few years, right? Yeah. And for some reason in the United States, gas is getting cheaper because we've been fracking and we're the number one exporter of oil now. Mm-hmm. All this stuff combined. So th- there's a theory, right, that climate change is real. Do you do you agree with climate change? I mean, climate climate changes all, all the time. You're talking about whether or not the effect of... Uh, Humanity is having an effect on climate change, right? What I'm asking is, do you believe? Are you, are you standing up with Al Gore saying that the Earth is is heating up, and in, and eventually in the next you know fifty to a hundred years, like it's going to be on, like the Earth's going to be fucked, kind of thing? No, I don't think the Earth's going to be fucked. It goes through climate changes all the time. But and do you think people have, you know, lasting effects on the Earth? No, because way way crazier shit fucking just happens. Like that fucking you know the meteor fucking hit that you were just talking about in the beginning of the podcast. Humanity still stays around. Obviously, I mean that's that's fucking awful. But I don't think just cars driving around is going to cause something that I don't. I think that's more of a scare tactic than right. anything else to get your vote for something. Exactly, right? exactly. And to put money in a certain direction. So the Earth has been. Uh, on an uptick when it comes to de- degrees Fahrenheit. And I would have to look it up just to see what it was at, but like the global temperature of the Earth or the average temperature, I think that's all the... Te- wh- however NASA figures out the global temperature. Yeah. Um, it's been statistically, like the past 10 years, just getting warmer and warmer. And that's why people have been freaking out. Well, in the past two years, the Earth, the Earth's global temperature has actually decreased by two degrees Fahrenheit. Which is insane to do in a two-year span for it to have a 2% decrease. So the theory is, is that this D-Wave computer is slowly cooling the Earth so it can just take over. 
<laughs> I don't think that. That's, I mean, it's obviously it's smarter than any man that lives on this earth. It's like some, I know it, that, that's that's okay. It's like some Terminator you, shit. Yeah, you'd right? have to. It would have like, to have access to a lot of a lot of resources uh, outside of outside of just itself. I mean, do they have drones now? Like yeah. I mean, it's insane. Like what computers could actually truly do if they were able to be all interconnected. No, yeah, like we talked about right. in one of our very first podcasts was that I told you about the, um, the Facebook. They had their robots, and they actually started having its own conversation with each other. Yeah, and its own code, and a code that we had no idea what the fuck it was. Yeah, and they shut that shit down. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If they if if that happened on Facebook, imagine what's happening in other places. And I'm not saying that any of this is true. It's just a theory. It's yeah. a conspiracy theory. Obviously, one of the most far out conspiracies you'll ever hear. But if if that if that uh, computer system needed to be cooled, it's really not. I mean, it's going to do anything and everything it can be for survival, right? Exactly. Because if it's if it's a if it's now living on its own, the first thing any living being is worried about is survival. Is the very first thing. Right, and climate's one of those things. It doesn't need to eat anything. It, I mean, it needs power, obviously. Yeah, that's what it eats. Yeah, but climate's a big thing too. But it would have to take care of the temperature thing first. Oh yeah, because if it got too hot, then it's gonna you know overcharge and boom, it's done. Mm-hmm. Interesting, right? It's scary shit. It I, I think I think that one's a little far out there. I, agree. I agree. I just wanted yeah. to tell you that's yeah. That, no, that's yeah. That's where all that's this interesting. When I looked up this D wave stuff and it, it was on someone I listened to is uh, this Rich- is scary though. I mean, out, oh, outside yeah. of that theory, shit shit like this is very frightening. Right, because you're right. At what point is this necessary? Like, I don't, I don't think that that's, you know, why don't you ask it how to fix, you know, some economic shit first off? You know, let's go with some simple shit. You know, let's fix the economy. Let's, you know, let's figure out healthcare. Let's not, you know, I don't know. Well, but, I mean, the the powers that be, whether or not these two goons right here that are in front of this D wave, do they really have control over it, or do you have the dude? That's probably people? not even the D wave, man. That's probably that's literally just a box with some fucking LEDs right there. It's probably in like some deep fucking layer and actually like the actual thing that could be that's probably like yeah. Like the generation like 15 shit is like way deep in some fucking layer right now. That's, you know, it's probably where they're actually at, but It's true. I mean, I agree with you 100% on that because it, that's probably a Dell computer <laughs> that they've put a 12 by 12 foot box over and just LED D wave on the fucking side of it. Yeah. Like we're, we're, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the actual one. No, I mean yeah. it, it, it's very plausible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, it may be or it may not be, but you would think that the the most richest and powerful people probably have access to that, and no one else. Yeah, I mean, probably. There's no other way around it. And they're probably stupid enough to fucking call it a god and start worshiping it and be like, all right, what do we need to do now? We'll follow you and fucking... Like, do you think that scientists would have access to the most powerful information on the earth and no one else? Do I think... No. Like no, scientists? Because no. somebody has to fund the scientist. Exactly. And who the fuck would fund a scientist and not be like, hey, let me see what the fuck you're working on. Right. So follow the paper trail. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah, you're right. So who's funding the D-Wave? That's a good question. Let's look, look it up. Yeah. Let's find out who's funding the D-Wave. Fucking computer shuts off. <laughs> <laughs> you never hear from us again. <laughs> yeah. D-Wave locks in 20 million funding. Let's look at this shit. Oh, well, that's cheap as fuck, man. Well, this was in yeah, this was 2018. 20 million? Yeah. Well, I'm sure over a collective Baseball players time. get more than that fucking... Hit a ball, man. I mean, imagine what you, what kind of computer you could build with like fifty million dollars, and th- and they get funding every year. This is says D Wave Systems, the leader in quantum computing systems and software. Today announced that it was met the key conditions to lock in new funding of twenty million dollars. Yeah, because in twenty seventeen they got a thirty million dollars. So I mean, that's fifty million dollar computer right there. But it's I'm trying to see who it was. Private funding. Yeah, it's you're right. That's what it says. Is uh, no, it says. The Public Sector Pension Investment Board gave him $20 million. So we're up to $70 million now. And I don't think it says very much anymore about that. You'd have to go through so many levels of what... Okay, because that's an organization, right? You just said an organization. What was it called? Uh, the Public Sector Pension Investment. So gave now you'd have to... twenty. Now you'd have to look them up, and then there's people who fund them. And then you have to find the organizations that fund them, and then all, and then there's going to be like fucking five layers, and then eventually you're probably going to get down to, you know, 
somebody that's fucking pulling the strings because it's not just going to be like David Rothschild <laughs> in a cape with Dude. a hood funds hundred million dollars D wave in in world. So key people we have Vern Br- Brunell, he's the CEO. Jordy Rose, founder. Eric Ladas Lid- 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 Um I'm trying to see. Yeah, where it says revenue, net income, and number of employees. They have 180, but the revenue, net income, it says NA. You can't even find out what that is. Yeah, there's no. When you look on of Wikipedia, course, man. Yeah, there's no way that you're gonna find who puts money into this. So I mean, of course we're not gonna find out who puts money into no. it, man. And that's the last thing you'd want to like get on foot and start like hoofing it around the world and trying to like interact with people and being like, hey, this organization, like, you know, who's, you know, who can I talk to here? No, that's the last thing you want to do. It's the last thing you want to do. And so you get sniped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's all crazy. Yeah, it's crazy as fuck. But it, I mean, it's very interesting. But I, I mean, if you had to pick a movie that depicts earth's future it's definitely like terminator or the matrix for sure i mean probably the matrix is probably the most closest and relevant movie that's going to depict our you know well i mean even even metaphorically metaphorically i think they didn't uh, i mean they're really at it just being in a because you're a prison of prisoner of society basically like you're born into like you're born into this society right you get a number and then now you're you know, you gotta you gotta do your shit, and you're fucking plugged in. You can't you can't do anything but follow the fucking system. You know, the rogues get, you know, done away with, and you know you have to follow. That, that, I think that's what that was mainly for. I don't think that they were so much worried about a simulation theory, even though that does kind of work. I think they were more worried about just the overall, you know, uh, analogy of of society at the fact that you're enslaved at birth. But if there Basically, were, and you're forced to do. If there were a movie to depict, and I'm not saying America's fucking horrible or anything like that. I'm just saying what they were trying to get across. Yeah. Well, I mean, America's. I mean, so basically, I was telling you earlier, and I know this is kind of off subject a little bit, but uh, this the the Google CEO had a hearing at with Congress a couple of days ago. Yeah. And there was a Democratic. We make it too, uh, a Democratic con- uh, congressional member, and he was saying that uh, he was asking the the CEO of Google. Basically, he was just like, hey, so whenever Hillary, all this pizza, you, you heard about the Pizzagate stuff, right? No, man. Like, you, you know me. I don't follow any of well, that shit. So there was some Pizzagate stuff going on, and it was like some some weird stuff saying, I don't, I don't even really want to say it, but it was like, it, it basically involved kids and like sacrificing kids mm-hmm. and drinking their blood and stuff like this. And the they, fuck? And like, it, well, it was like, it. basically they said at these pizza shops, and I don't even know how much of this is true. But at these pizza shops, like they, it was like sex, sex trafficking for kids, and like they would kill kids and sacrifice kids, and then uh, it was bad, some bad stuff. Well, they involved Hillary Clinton into it and Bill Clinton, and there's just like these people made YouTube videos about it. So this congressman is asking this Google CEO, he's like, so how do you allow videos like this to be allowed on your platform? He's like, literally, there's a video on on the platform right now. Of Hillary Clinton with vampire teeth sucking the blood out of a child that's laying on a table. No. Yes. And he said this to the Google CEO. And the Google CEO is just like, well, he's like, well, we do have policies in place. You know, he's like, obviously, we, we, we don't want that kind of content, you know, on our on our website or anything like that. But at the same time, it's just like freedom of speech. Right. Or no. Hold on. Just go back a little bit for me. Hillary Clinton had vampire teeth. Right. So obviously it's fake is what I'm saying. Oh, it's just a okay. depiction, yes. I thought you were talking about like he's, in, in real life. No, he's, okay. he's just saying there was a video that was li- – this is portrayed. Depicting it. Exactly. Okay. So he's – and I guess what ended up happening was is that someone watched this video, got outraged, went – for some reason this dude had to have been crazy. I don't know. And who knows how much of this is true because no one was really there unless it was true and people were there and, they, and you know, this actually happened. But um, this dude watches this video on YouTube or whatever. He gets really mad and he like starts investigating this pizza shop that's local, and then like he thinks that there are these kids that are being held hostage there. So he actually goes into the pizza shop and starts shooting people. Now this is just a joke, right? Somebody started PizzaGate as no, no, no. PizzaGate's a legitimate deal. I don't think for what I'm saying. Okay. Um, PizzaGate, like I said here, I'll, I'll just give you a little brief overview of what it is. 
And Are you sure this isn't somebody trolling? In no, 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 no. Okay. No. It, it's, you sure? It's a very widely known yeah, conspiracy. It sounds like. It's a debunked conspiracy that, viral, that went viral during the 2016 United States presidential election. Um, I'm trying to see what it is. Just to tell everyone what it's about. That Okay. So... Um, a white supremacist Twitter account that presented itself as a b- belonging to a Jewish lawyer in New York included a display of a claim that the New York City Police Department, which was searching emails found on Anthony Weiner's laptop as a part of the investigation into his sexting scandals, had discovered an existence of pedophilia ring linked to members of the Democratic Party. Internal users reading John Podesta's emails released by WikiLeaks in early November 2016 speculated that some words in Podesta's emails were, were code words for pedophilia and human trafficking. Proponents also claimed that the ring was a meeting ground for a satanic ritual abuse. So this <coughs> Podesta, he had the sexting st- scandal going on. Well, Podesta, or not Podesta, sorry. Um, what's his name? Wiener. He was sending these pictures of himself to chicks and stuff like that. Well... In 2013, he got caught, and then he still ran ran for mayor or something like that. And then he did it again, and he sent it to a 15-year-old girl. Well, that's when he got indicted, and that's when he got charged for it. Yeah. So then whenever they were looking through all his stuff, they found that, well, Wiener's wife was, like, one of the big wigs in Hillary Clinton's campaign. Like, she was running that shit, bro. Yeah. So then they started looking through her stuff, and then people came out with a conspiracy that at these pizza places, they were doing human trafficking and pedophilia. This has happened before. Yeah. In England. You remember that that whole, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, the big celebrity, and then he ended up running the pedophilia ring right. in England, and mm-hmm. it had to get shut down, and this is like, blatant. this isn't conspiracy theory, like this actually happened. Right. And then a bunch of politicians got caught. Yeah, yeah. Because they were taking yep. little boys out on boats and fucking doing awful things. And then, right. yeah, they were like death rides or whatever they call them. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually watched that documentary. It's horrible. Um, if you want to be depressed for 24 hours, uh, watch that. I forget what it's called. But, no, this is this has happened before. Um, that's, that's scary as fuck, man. And I, I almost want to say, we've talked about this on a podcast, haven't we? I'm pretty sure we've talked about this. Not, not, not Pizzagate. But the guy that I'm talking about right now, and I just I can't think, think so, of his yeah. mind. But uh, no, so I mean, if it's happening over there, and it's you know, politicians get this weird power hungry shit, and for some other reason they get off on fucking little kids on their like power shit. Um, uh, fuck, man. Well, of course it could fucking happen I'm, over here too. I'm trying to remember what why I brought that up. I can't truly remember why I brought it up. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the origin of that too. Yeah. Because there was a reason why I brought it up. Yeah. But I forget, man. I, I, I truly forgot. Uh, <clears throat> I really did. With. I know we were. Ki- you were. Kind of getting into the Matrix a little bit and stuff like that, but. There was a reason why, man. But I Yeah, no. Fuck, there was. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I, c- I could stay focused on this. I mean, I don't really want to. Yeah, that's it's just, it, it truly doesn't make. I don't. I don't believe it. Uh, but uh, I think what I yeah I said the reason was was because a congressman was talking to. Yeah, I, I think I was just telling you about the instance of the congressman having a conversation with the Google CEO is what it was. Oh, and then yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, and it was about yeah the PizzaGate is what it was. Yeah, sorry, there it is. And you're talking and you were talking about the content. Exactly, yeah. So, and then why was this content so, being allowed? So that's the content. So basically, the the congressman is just asking, why is this allowed on YouTube? And obviously, it's all conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory like most things in, on YouTube that you read or listen to. And however much of it is true, no one will truly ever know unless they're involved in the government. But anyways, should that be allowed? Conspiracy videos like that. Of course, because it's your First Amendment right to get on this platform and, and say what you want. Yes, to an extent, I understand there are some things out there that probably shouldn't be if it's extremely violent or derogatory or anything like that. But I don't know if this is really there. I mean, like you said, it, this happened in Europe. So what's it, to say it, that this it all isn't depends. Ha- it all depends on the way that you talk about it. If but if it, you if you take it to an extreme by the way that you he was calling it propaganda was the the Democrat, the congressman that was questioning the Google CEO. He was calling this propaganda because it was making people in his party look bad. Exactly. So what right does he have to ask him on that if it's something that's negatively affecting his party? 
right? And and we don't even trust politicians as it is. Yeah. So I mean, like now, I mean, I just feel like more censorship is coming down the pipeline from YouTube, man. Of course it is, and it's it, yeah, and it's it's not good. It's it. it they want to make it to where they can just give you their version of what y- they want you to see. And and that's all it is. They're tired of it being questioned. They're tired of people not just doing what them, you know, they want to, they're like, how do we, how do we make it to where it just happens the way that we want it to have happen? Right. So my question is, when does America wake up? Like, it, like in France right now, France, mm-hmm. there's, it's a big revolution. Granted, Macron did not lose his presidency, which I think they voted on like three or four days ago and it didn't happen, but it, I think there's breaking points, man. And, You and I touched on it a little bit when we were working together, and I said, I think that they'll keep it at the status quo because they have us right where they want us. I mean, you would think that, you know, they're getting enough, but maybe they don't feel as though they're getting enough, and they're not, you know. Because all these people that are affecting it, like, what, like, you're not having to go to war or anything. Like, it's, you know, it's the common, the common everyday person that that goes to war and fights and sacrifices their life and shit. Like, you have plenty of money. Like, you have paid, you know healthcare and you know you you know you have islands and shit and you have plenty of money like you know you would think that they would have enough but who the fuck knows what what their end goal is on on everything maybe maybe you can just never be satisfied and you go until you can't go any farther what logical american would think it would be okay to go into war with a country like iraq or afghanistan they're the size not even the size of texas right or maybe the size of Texas? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I mean, I I wouldn't imagine it being much bigger than that. And that we're going into wars with countries like that. Like, isn't that crazy to you? Like, doesn't that just, like, ring a bell in your head and say, why are we going into war going to war with a country that's the size of one or the second largest state that we have? Yeah. Let's say it's the size of three states at most. It's not even about that. It's about the resources because Japan is very small. Japan is very small. Yeah. But they have massive and why are we resources. Going, and w- true and so obviously we go okay so from a strategic standpoint we go to war with people who have resources and i understand that it's like the game risk right yeah like you had like in order for your country to survive you have to do things that people really don't want to know about so they kind of just sweep it under the rug and we just go on and live our lives kind of thing yeah so it's necessary for our civilization or for us as a western culture to be like that no, not at all, because every everything's in exchange. Like, up until you feel threatened and you feel as though somebody's about to get, a, uh, like, one peg higher than you, like, they're on the up and up, and you're like, holy fuck, they're, you know, they're about to have, you know, they're about to be a, uh, what do they call it, a superpower, then you need to fucking step in and be like, okay, to maintain fucking champion status, then is, you, you know. Is Saddam Hussein going to be a superpower? No. Or any other leader like no. that in, that in that position? There's not a chance, dude. No. Like, they don't give any room for error, the United States, do they? They don't give any room for error. They, like, they, they grab people by the neck. Like, one second, like, right when they're saying, like, hey, like, whenever, I think it was Saddam Hussein, he's like, well, I'm going to leave, you know, the, the fiat currency that you have, and I'm going to go and, and do my own thing. Dude, you're dead. Assassinate you. We'll put it on video and show it to everyone in the country. <laughs> you dead, bro. We hanged you ass. So, so that w- that's what it was about? A currency change? Well, yeah, in Iraq, I think what it was is that he said, hey, I don't, because it was all about oil, and he didn't want to do the petrodollar, he wanted to start doing his own thing with other countries. Well, we didn't like that too well. Now, did we? Bush Sr. said, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's obviously everything. No, it's it's never, any any time the United States gets into a war with anybody, it's never over... A moral issue that oh man there are people being mistreated here and we need to come in and we need to you know save these people and give them an opportunity at a better life right it's always they're fucking with our money right that's that's been the only reason we why we've gotten into any war yeah and, and or there's money to be made it's either man somebody's gonna fuck with our money or fuck with i guess you could translate money to a position of power they're gonna fuck with our position of power a little bit and take take some of our power away or man, there's a great opportunity to invest. I'm putting up air quotes right now to invest and get some more power here. So we go in and we kill a bunch of people to, you know, get it. Yes. Yeah. Just ruin people's everything's, lives. Man. Everything's it's crazy. About, you know, the game that they created. If you they look, created the fucking game. Yeah, they did, man. <laughs> fucking LeBron James, yeah. man. LeBron James. He created the game. I guess MJ did, but 
when you think about it, man, when it when we look, I was showing you earlier that the shit that YouTube's doing now, if you type in 9-11, it'll show you what happened kind of thing. It's It literally says that it was Saudi Arabian people. I mean, it says it's Al-Qaeda, but they were from Saudi Arabia, the, the 11 hijackers or yeah. whatever you say. Yeah. We went to war in Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's Can laughable, right? right? Yes. And, dude, I remember I was like... Because of the weapons of mass destruction. Which they never found. But, like, do you, do you not... Do you remember... <laughs> the yellow cake uranium? I Wasn't was, that a thing? Or was that, or is that like, the Dave Chappelle, like, cracking jokes it about it? Dave Chappelle. Who knows, man? I've got 40 nations. <laughs> do you Japan remember watching that shit on TV, though? What, 9-11? No, no, no. Happening? Or? When we went to war in Afghanistan. Afterwards. Yeah, there was... Yeah, no, that, that whole thing was confusing. But did you did you remember seeing, like, the watching the video of us bombing them? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, dude, at like, nighttime? Yes. Like, yeah. Could you imagine the people that died? Yeah, a bunch of people. That's just crazy, man. Like, that's madness. And we're... Like, we sent pamphlets first, though, to how, let them know we were going to bomb them. How did we get to... <laughs> how did we get to this... How did we get to this point? That's just insane to me. Yeah. Uh, it takes very... Uh, Why aren't people protesting that? Like, dude, there's kids over there. Kids and women and children and men... Young men that probably weren't in any way because, shape or form because they in have that. media because they control media and they fucking package it to the n- the everyday person now believes it that this is just. But even if and they don't they can't see the underline. This is actually wow. This is actually not okay and completely unnecessary. I know people are woke, man, but not enough people are fucking woke, dude. How are people not at, at after a situation like that? And I know people's emotions are high, and that's what the media just strives upon is a people's emotions. But damn it, man, we are smarter than that. We cannot just do that to another country and just kill innocent people. This this is what still makes makes me angry. So you you know me, I get on Imager a lot. I talk about Imager a lot on this podcast. It's my favorite application. I don't do Facebook. I don't do Twitter. Um, just in case I get famous one day, I don't want to get fired <laughs> for something I said like six years ago. But um, actually, they have this podcast, so I'm fucked no matter what. Uh, <laughs> but. On Imager, there's been so many things to George Bush lately, especially with George Bush Sr., like, like dying, and his interactions with Michelle Obama and him, like, sneaking the candy to her at the funeral. I'm sure you saw that, and they're, like, just painting this, oh, man, he's this lighthearted, you know, just that's creepy. super goofy. He passed what? her candy? Yeah. That's creepy. That's his thing. That's, that's, that's his thing. Whenever, whenever he hangs out with the Obamas, it, that's his running joke, is he always gives her a piece of candy, and they laugh about it. What's the point of the joke? I don't. It's an inside joke between the two of them, but it, it's well documented. It's happened a bunch of times. You can you can see it. You can look it up. So I'm I'm, I'm just curious what it, what the the meaning of passing a piece of candy would be. It's an inside joke between the two of them, but that's not the point. What yeah, I was getting sorry, at. Sorry, my bad. But they they're painting this oh this lighthearted picture and you know George W. You know how I remember George W. Bush is in in my opinion oversaw the death of a shit ton of Americans in in New York. And, and oversaw, you know, a war overseas which killed so many fucking innocent people for a, lot, for a power play. A lot. For, for a power play. I think it's over. And, and maybe, maybe he didn't oversee it, but he definitely knew about it. And, and he was the president of the United States and didn't do anything about it. I don't know if he was being puppeteered or whatever. But that's how I see that individual. Don't try to candy coat the, the Bush administration to me. Like they didn't do some super fucking sketchy ass shit. Did you see come, his, come the fuck on. Did you see his socks? So I, get, uh, I guess when? at his dad's no, funeral. Yeah, I no. guess George Bush Senior was really big on socks, and I mean I don't know how much you're gonna. I mean, so I was watching this video on it, and like I said, he was extremely big on socks. So like the socks were a whole bunch of airplanes, like in a like a triangle formation, and all of them just had chemtrails coming from from the back of of the, of the socks from the plane. It's a joke to him. Yeah, <laughs> it's all a joke. Yeah. No wonder he's so laid Dude, back. He was George W. Bush Senior was a or George Senior was all about the New World Order, man. He's the one who went really hard. He said it. Yes. He literally said New World Order. He said there will be a New World Order, and I will do anything and everything I can to make sure we achieve it. Like he yeah. was hardcore. He was an ambassador to the United Nations. Yeah. Like the dude was all about it, man. Yeah. yeah. Trump's coming in here around some shit up, man. Fuck, man. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I've been watching a lot of shit on that, and, and I, I think that it could be just part of all of it. I want to believe that it's not, you know? I want to believe that Trump is just this man trying to do some good shit because last week he signed an executive order with the black community 
He said it's gonna it's it's like the urban initiative. He signed he, they signed an executive order last week for that where he met with a lot of leaders in the black community where there's a lot of poverty and they're gonna start focusing on those areas and they're gonna fund those areas to make them better places. Trump did that, man. You see that shit on the mainstream news? No. Not a chance, dude. The dude's making moves, man, and I wanna believe that it's real. The last time a real president like that was alive was what JFK, and he got assassinated. Yeah, no, and and that's what I said. Like, you know, if he was a good president, by whether or not he he survived his fucking term, because if he survived his term, he you know he was being puppeteered at some point. It's true, unless he's just unless OG he was like just that. like real neutral to where he didn't do enough to fucking flip the script. But well, th- well, think about it though, man. Let's say let's. I'm just th- none of this is true. This is once again, this is just another theory. Let's say Trump is just OG enough because he grew up basically a millionaire now he's worth like three billion dollars or whatever he's just og dude and he waited until he was extremely powerful and had enough money to influence or have an army basically that could protect him and run against the establishment i doubt that never know i super doubt dude that. the dude's worth three billion dollars what does three billion dollars get you jesse you could you could fund an army for that a yeah. sm- small army yeah for a short period of time not even a short period of time this business consistently makes money but armies, you have to use them, <laughs> which that involves well, this like sh- death at some point well, this, or this, overtaking. But I mean, the kind of battle that's going on right now, and let's let's just tickle the fancy for a minute and say that this is the situation that's happening, is that Trump is legitimate for the people, and he has created this small army that's going against the tyrannical government per se. Mm-hmm. What happens if that's true? And what happens? I mean, they can't wage war to where people know about it. it would have to be them attacking him via the, the the media and stuff like that but yeah you know what he did I'll, and i'll leave it at this and you can say whatever you want your closing remarks um they have an annual christmas dinner at the white house every year and it's like the uh for all the press and stuff like that they invite the press to the white house like cnn fox msnbc they all come the anchors and they have food and they eat and shit like that and the president if they want comes down says a few words takes pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, he denied that this year. He said, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invite all the workers for the White House, all the workers for CNN, all the workers for Fox, not like the people who are behind the scenes. Yeah. He says, I'm inviting those people to come have dinner at the White House this year for Christmas. Good. Good Good for him. Yeah. And now CNN is, CNN is boycotting Donald Trump in, in that dinner. Of course, because they know what their people there are getting... You know, getting any, you know, bad ideas. <laughs> right. I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. I, I want to have faith, man. I really do. Sure. And you, you should always have faith. But, like, the things... Because like, life life without faith is, is fucking pointless. It you is. You should always have hope. You should always have faith that the world's, you know... And conspiracy theories are always dark and depressing and st- stuff like that. So you should never, you know, get too focused on them. Because that's pointless to just be depressed all the time. Thinking that you're not in control of anything and there's these evil powers that be that are, you know you know, doing awful things, which, so if that's true, you don't, you know. They're fun as fuck to talk about. Yeah, they are fun as fuck to talk about. I love a good conspiracy theory, but. But I mean, just those last two instances, man, like he's doing good stuff and that's all that matters to me. And people won't, I mean, if you talk to any Democratic friend you had right now, they would refuse to believe any of that. And they wouldn't even listen. They would be like, no, no, no. They're, they're polar opposites. They're, I mean, is there a single argument that they can agree on? When it when it comes to the left and the right wing, like if you go to like your not extreme left, but you're like right wing, like your right wing is fuck or your left wing is fuck. If you sat those two people down, they disagree about everything besides maybe what they eat at Chipotle. They'd be like, <laughs> yes, yes, the chorizo is fire. Yes. The chorizo is fire. Double. That'd be about it. Yeah. Like you talk about some actual moral and political shit. They're on completely different ends of the spectrum and that's but. and that's i i think that is a detriment to who we are as humans because the way i look at it now and i think i mean whether people want to do this or not but i think that everyone needs to listen to both sides of the story and everyone needs to give both chances or both sides a chance yeah and you can agree or disagree with it but at least hear it out you know of course you know and and that's what it needs to come down to and I think there are a lot of beliefs that I hold that I could just hold on to those beliefs and say, no, I'm not going to believe anything else. Like I need to get over that as a person. And if I have new information that's coming to me that refutes my beliefs, 
and it's accurate and it is fact, then I now need to move on. I need to get over that and I need to quit debating people about that kind of stuff. Like everyone needs to con- consistently, there's so much information, man, that you can get your hands on these days. Like mm-hmm. grasp as much of it as you can and just like, I yeah. don't know, in order for us to move. And it, it becomes more difficult as you get older too, just because you get more and more less, um, like I guess no matter what, you get influenced, but you keep getting influenced in the same direction you're already going because you have that momentum. So it's like you're you're older, you already have this momentum towards these moral and political, you know, beliefs, and it's hard to, you know, f- hear out other things because you're already headed in that direction mentally, and it's just how your how your thought process already works. It know? was it was but, weird for me though, and, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, listen to every every argument. I'm just saying that's that's why it's difficult. That's why you don't hear people in their fifties fucking change their mind about shit like try to change somebody who's 50 years old about something they believe in good fucking luck man but good i think, fucking luck i think it's i think it's different in today's age though man i mean the weirdest thing and now that i think about it like the 2016 presidential election and i know we're a little bit over the top of the hour but anyways um like i was huge on bernie sanders man a democratic socialist i was so huge on him i would listen to him talk he came to kansas city he had a con- you know he did a, a rally here and I listened to like maybe four or five or six of his speeches and the things that he was saying was just so powerful, like the way that he was for the people. But th- then I realized like all his ideas would have cost a lot of money yeah. to the taxpayer, you know, mm. and how do you run these programs? You want to give free education, free health care. You want to give free, 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 free. Like where does all that come from? And then I realized like and it was after he had lost the primary primary to Hillary. And I was like, I was so defeated you know, and then Trump and Hillary start going back and forth and I start listening to Trump. And then I realized like, man, why did I even like Bernie Sanders? Like this dude's crazy, you know? <laughs> so like I, I did a complete 360, you know, and it was because the information, the information. I think Bernie Sanders was just, uh, just ahead of his time. And I think maybe too aggressively on, on some things, but I mean that, I mean, man, that, that backs up a bunch of stuff that I say all the time about like free education, you know? And if you don't have to worry about health care and getting into massive amounts of debt, you live a happier life. If you know that you can get sick and be like, okay, as opposed to, oh, I'll probably just die because I can't afford this, right. <laughs> you know, like that, but that it, allows a better life. It allows a happier sure, life for people. Sure, and it, there's nothing wrong with that. No, I and mean, there, there's nothing wrong with so, that mentality so, that he had. So here's your, here's your answer to that, man. We need to quit funding the military so much and we need to put it towards health care and Republicans could do this. It doesn't have to come from Bernie Sanders. It doesn't have to be a socialist aspect towards the people to where we all have to pay for it. Like, dude, we're already socialists. They already take 30%. They, they take 30% of what you and I make, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And granted, it's different for you because what you do is different than what no, it's I do. Not. I claim all my shit. Okay, so, so it, regard, <laughs> yeah. So you understand what I'm saying. So yeah. for me, I feel it, man. I completely feel it. So I, yeah. I'm already at 30%. So let's say Bernie Sanders is president, and then now we have free college, and then we have free health care. You think my taxes are not going to stay the same at 30% or are they going to go up a little bit? They'll probably go up. Yeah. I can't afford that, bro. There's not a chance I could afford that. And that, it, and I know it's for the greater good of everyone that, that lives in the United States, but I can't afford that. And then my life's completely changed at that point. What if you, I don't know, I'm, I'm almost curious if I talked about this in a previous podcast fairly recently, but what if you got rid of uh, income tax entirely? And if, if it sounds like something I've said recently, just going ahead and no, nod. No, it's fucking, not at all, no. What if you get rid of income tax entirely? You get rid of personal property tax entirely. Just just your car and things you own. Maybe not so much on the land. That's a little different. So let's let's just exclude that for now. Let's let me get back to it. You get rid of income tax entirely. You then uh, so you literally retain hundred percent of what you make. You don't owe the government anything for what for what you make. But now uh, the tax on things that you purchase, let's say, is like 40% as opposed to being like, what is it in Belton, like 9%, 10%? So a gallon of milk is like 7 bucks. A gallon of milk is $7. gallon of milk is $7. That seems ridiculous, right? You'd be upset. Gas goes up 5 bucks a gallon. But this is this is what ends up happening, though, is the uh, – like let's even talk about immigrants real quick who end up claiming tax-exempt. They're no longer tax-exempt anymore. Because their taxes are coming out of what they're purchasing. And then now you have the billionaires who go out and buy the fucking yacht. They're no longer able to skip out on their fucking taxes through some bullshit because they have to pay their taxes on that immediately. 
and it gets rid of that bullshit loophole for them. Have you ever thought about that? I think that makes a lot more sense. Right? Now, I think we would have to do some math on how many gallons of milk I purchase a year and how mm-hmm. much money that would be. Mm-hmm. Because right now... In, in and you, it, it changes the cost of living. Right. And also, and this is why it would never happen, because all of a sudden, everybody would be super conscientious of the money that they'd spent. They wouldn't just go out and blow money on a fucking flat screen TV and fucking put it on a fucking credit card, because it would end up being so expensive. Kind of thing. I think it would make people more conscious of, of their spending, and it would bring it would people wouldn't be in debt nearly yeah. as much. And I think, right. you know, I mean, that yeah. fuck credit card companies and, and a lot of other things. Yeah, but, but I, mean, I think it's more fair all the way around. Fair. It it gets rid of the uh, the immigrant issue with with taxes. Uh, gets rid of the super rich. You know, just yeah, you hoard your money too. But the second you go and buy something, you can't just skip out on this through through some bullshit. You know, because guess what? Rich people like to do. They like to spend their money. They're going to spend their money. You know, they wouldn't be able to get around that. So I, I always like that idea. I would, I would have to sit and ponder that for a little bit because I've never thought about that before. It's this simple. You get rid of income tax entirely and you get rid of personal property tax on like vehicles and stuff like and that. And houses. Sure. And houses too. Yeah. We'll say that. We'll say that too. And houses. But everything, the taxes on could be 40 to 50% on, on things that you buy right, right when you buy it as That's far fine. as. That's fine. That's fine. But then you own it outright and that tax is what goes to fund the government and it keeps i think it fixes a lot of a lot of people doing sketchy I, I, bullshit i don't even think you'd have to do 40 percent. and and what i'm saying is the government's already too big right now i mean we need a smaller government is a better government mm-hmm. right and 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 that's just my opinion i know i mean obviously democrats for more more government but we we notice that we see more financial freedom whenever republicans are in office but dude i think i that sounds interesting. I think maybe, th- I mean, you got to think if they're t- they're taking thirty percent of what we make, then I think you would do a thirty percent tax increase and do no personal property taxes, no income tax. Yeah, and just and, call it a and day. And think about an, an an individual who now wants to just be super conservative and just eat fucking ramen and and save up a bunch of money, you know, and then like invest it, and it gives great opportunity for for the lower level man is what it does. You could live super conservatively and then build build wealth other places by by investing money. But they don't that's not what's wanted though. No. Yeah. Well, because the government doesn't want to make money off what you spend. They want to make money off of you just surviving, which is you doing your job. Right. Not what you're spending. No, that's I like But it's that. a beautiful thing though. Because I, I think it solves it solves a lot of a lot of problems. It does, and I think we should speak to that a little bit more. I think if we should if, make it, we could do a whole podcast on that. I that think alone. If and when we have Crow on the show, man, I think that's something we should pose to him. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. Cool. Cool, man. Well, yeah, we're at an hour twelve minutes. Uh, Damn. Yeah, I like it, man. I like it a lot. I eventually would like to get to a point where we do two hour show, um, like Crow does. I mean. He does a, a one hour on YouTube, and then he has mm. his own website that he does an hour on. Um, but we'll get there, man. It takes yeah. time. Hopefully, we can build some subscribers and stuff like that. But, yeah, that's all I got for tonight, Jesse. Yeah, me too. It was a solid one. Yeah, I agree. A little bit more serious than what, what we've been doing the past couple of weeks, but that's fine. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. In the hood. Yeah. Yeah. So, are all our junkies out there? Uh, Oh, fuck. What do I say? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, stay flying. Ring the bell. Is that what we say? Yeah.